Hello and welcome back to Mr. Current's Ledger Airy Tutorials. What we're going to be looking at today in the Year 11 Accounting Tutorials is how to prepare a statement of cash flows. Now you're going to get one of these on the exam, so you'll need to know firstly how to actually create a cash flow statement. So you're going to have to know all the headings and where to actually place all the uh, ledger accounts within that cash at bank ledger, ledger account for that month. Now here is our accounting joke of the day. What kind of debt did the secret agent issue? A bond. James Bond. Now what you're going to do is watch this video and determine the importance of maintaining cash flow for a business. I'd like to withdraw my life savings, please. And hurry! Uh, sir, this is a joint account. Uh, you'll need your wife's signature, too. Oh, yes, of course. Yeah, uh, she's behind that plan. Hello, Marge. Hi, homie. Sign this, please. You're the boss. Daddy, ask the man for some candy. No, no, no candy for you. Then at least get some candy for yourself. <laughs> Kids. <sighs> Here's your candy. So long, sucker! Uh, sir, your life savings? Uh, yes, I see that it's in bill form. Excellent. I'd like to buy 500 shares of Animotion Incorporated. Okay. Uh, now before I execute this order, are you sure you understand the risks of stock ownership? Absolutely. You heard the monkey. Make the trade. For automated stock prices, please state the company name. Animotion. Animotion. Up one and one half. Yahoo! Yahoo. Up six and a quarter. Uh, what is this crap? Fox Broadcasting. Down eight. Sleep tight, my beloved. You're my ticket out of this hellhole. Homer! Sorry. Our ticket out of this hellhole. <laughs> Turning to the stock market, Animotion is up an eighth. Yes! After plunging 75 points this morning. Oh, I hope plunging means up and 75 means 200. The firm declared super-duper bankruptcy, which is terrible news for the company's only stockholder, Homer Simpson. Oh! As you can see from the little clip from The Simpsons, the importance of cash flow is that if you don't have cash coming into the business, that means you can't actually generate any capital improvements for the business or expansion. But first and foremost, it means that you can't actually maintain all the bills in daily operations of the business. So the cash flow is basically the lifeblood of a business. No cash flow coming in. That basically means you'll be leaning towards a super duper bankruptcy. Now, as the slide represents, a cash flow statement is a statement that summarizes the amount of cash and cash equivalents entering and leaving a company. So it measures how well a company generates cash to pay its debt obligations and to fund its operating expenses. So in other words, if you don't actually generate cash from all of your services and in other income revenue streams for the business, you can actually pay for the day-to-day -day operations of the business and also fund future expansion. Now what we see here is basically the cash flow statement that you're going to have to remember for the exam. And a cash flow statement is made up of three main parts. Operating expenses, activities, investing activities, financing activities, and then a summary at the end to reconcile the cash of bank account for that period. So you can see here for each of these main sources or sections of the cash flow statement, it is divided into inflows and outflows. So for your operating activities, the main sections are cash receipts from customers, cash paid to suppliers and employees, and cash generated from operations, which is a subtotal of those two things. And as you can see here, inflows are represented by a positive number and outflows are represented by negative numbers. Now you'll be doing these in Microsoft Excel. And then you'll have other forms of revenue and then a subtotal of everything from 
the inflows and outflows from operating activities as as you can see here now i have a little tr uh, video after this slide which goes through what goes into each of these headings here and you're going to have to know how to do those but in summary what i've got here is four main points receipts from customers uh, is the service revenue of the business which you'll see on the debit side of the cash or bank account Payments to suppliers and employees are all business expenses, not including purchase of property, patent, and equipment. So that will include things like uh, wages, uh, rent expense, repairs and maintenance, telephone expense, and, and those types of expenses, which are the day-to-day -day running of a business. Investing activities is just dealing with property, patent, and equipment inflows which is the selling and outflows which is the purchase of property plant and equipment financing activities deals with capital contributions of the business owner drawings of the business owner and loans so these are the four main sections now on the on this little uh, hint here the number of brackets represents outflows and the other numbers represent inflows so as you can see here, tax paid is an outflow for the business as opposed to cash receipts from customers, which is an inflow. So you're going to have to distinguish inflows and outflows by doing that in Microsoft Excel, which I'll show you how to do. But before we go into this uh, example, these are some examples that you'll actually see the types of transactions that, that will actually be in a cash or bank ledger account. So what I'm going to get you to do is to record or determine whether service revenue is an inflow or an outflow. If you think it's an inflow, you're going to write inflow here. And then the corresponding section of the cash flow statement. So is it in operations, investing or financing? So in a Microsoft spreadsheet or a Word document, draw up this table and then complete the exercise. And once you've done that, check your answers on the corresponding slide. Now, as you can see here, I've given all the answers here to you. And what you're going to do is you're going to go through those answers and to see what, how well you actually did. So most of these, as you can see here, will either be an inflow or an outflow and the corresponding section of the cash flow statement. So, for example, service revenue is obviously revenue coming into the business, which is an inflow, which will be in operating expenses supplies expense which is payment of supplies will be an outflow going into operating expenses so check your answers and see how well you actually went you can actually use this as a exam tip for the up and coming exam which is in block exams and this could serve you as a bit of a revision sheet for you excellent excellent Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. 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 Now here's a cash flow exercise. And this is basically the type of question that you're going to get on the exam. So you'll see here, you'll have a ledger account of cash at bank and various transactions for the month. So I've categorized here for you all the different types of tra these transactions into the sections of the cash flow statement. So the, one, uh, the numbers down here represent the dates. So on the first, we've got capital contributions, which are financing and so on so the next slide will be going through how to actually complete the cash flow statement from this ledger 
Now here's a free lesson on how to actually complete a cash flow statement. If any amounts on the debit side of the cash at bank account, they will represent inflows. Anything on the credit side of the cash at bank account will re represent outflows. So there is one easy tip in which to actually remember on how to actually complete a cash flow statement using a cash at bank ledger account. Now what we've got here in this example here for a statement of cash flows is a T-Ledger account of cash at bank. You're going to get one of these in the exam and what you're going to have to do is to produce a cash flow statement similar to this and actually at the end reconcile to this uh, debit balance here of cash at bank. So the whole idea of a statement of cash flows is to show the movement in the cash at bank account and also to show that the cash at bank account at the end of the month of 18,300 corresponds with the ledger account here of 18,300. So you know you are right when you get that answer at the end. Now you're going to have to know this template in for the exam. So you, this will not actually be given to you. And all it is is actually producing this statement of cash flow and knowing where to actually place these various account transactions. So we can see here we've got a number of transactions relating to capital contributions, wages, dividends, service fees, revenues. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> <coughs> wages, dividends, paying, uh, buying of shares and also some personal drawings. Now each of these transactions will actually go into various parts of the cash flow statement. And this parts of the cash flow statements are financing, operating, invest and investing. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to show you where to actually put these various transactions. Alright, so a cash flow statement is made up of inflows and outflows of operating activities, investing activities and also financing activities. So I've color coded those to represent that they are the main sections of the cash flow statement. Now the big accounting tip here, if any of the amounts are on the debit side of the cash or bank account, so in other words these ones here, they will represent inflows in your cash flow statement. So we are going to have inflows of 20,000 of capital contributions, inflows of dividends, of $1,900 and inflows of service fees for $2,100 for the month. And on the credit side, they represent outflows and they are negative amounts. Now you can see here outflows are negative amounts represented in the cash flow statement and they are, will be uh, wages of 1600 times 2 which is $3,200 uh, payments and purchase of shares and also personal drawings. So you won't get a question that is about as big as this in the exam. So the first one we're going to put into is capital contributions and this will represent a positive amount. And as what I see here it's got a uh, financing so you go down to your financing sections and in inflows you'll see here one called capital contributions and that is where you actually put your $20,000. Now since we don't have proceeds of borrowings, you can put that as zero and you pr produce a subtotal here of $20,000. Now remembering to do an auto sum is up here and we're just adding up these two numbers. The next one we're going to do, and we're going to do the wages at the same time, is uh, put $1,600 times 2 in the outflows of operating expenses and they go under payments to employees. Okay, so we are going to have that as a negative number. So put that as a negative number there and then do a subtotal. and put that as there. And then we'll put, since we've got, uh, the next one we're going to do is a dividend from shares. And dividend from shares will go into the financing, financing activities. So we'll go down here, purchase of shares here, 
and we're going to put a minus two thousand dollars. Now remember with our flows always put a minus number. And same thing here, do an auto sum because we don't have any purchase or property paint equipment and that will represent two thousand dollars. And then the next one we are going to do is service fees revenue. So service fees revenue goes up here in info's receipts from customers. So you're going to have to remember where they all go. So which, and therefore that is why I put these in, in red so you know where they actually go. Next thing we're going to do is we are going to put Uh, the dividends from shares, which we haven't done, and they go for receipts from interest and dividends. Okay, we don't have any other operating revenue. Other operating revenue would be things like um, rent revenue, commission revenue, and things like that. So every time you do a, a you'll do a subtotal for the inflows and the outflows. So we're going to add all of those figures up. And that adds to four thousand dollars and then the next one we're going to do is we're going to put drawings of five hundred dollars and they go down in payment of drawings so make sure you put the negative amount and then we're going to do a subtotal here okay now that is all of the transactions that we need to do so we're going to do subtotals and totals for each of these ones here now We've done that. I showed you how to do that one before. We've done that one before. To do this uh, 800, you get your subtotal from your inflows and you add your outflows. And so we're going to do that for all of these ones now. And then uh, the net increase, decrease in cash held is just adding all of these numbers up here. So all of our totals. Cash at the beginning of the month is usually you might have a balance brought down here, but since this is a new business that is starting, it is zero. And then to get your cash at the end, you equal your net increase or decrease in cash held plus your beginning. And to know you're right, that equals 18,300, which is the same as that. So as I said, you'll get one of these in the exam, so you'll need to know how to do this template here. So you're going to have to remember how to set this out correctly. And also where to put the different types of accounts.